Good afternoon. Would you like to be seated? My name's Christine Wilson. I'm the Dean of Lincoln, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you here to your cathedral here at Lincoln. I hope it will be the first or possibly uh, one of many visits to the cathedral. And uh, I get the privilege also of being here on the day that you graduate. But I hope that between then and now, there will be many opportunities for you to come. You're always welcome, and there's always a place of hospitality for you. And indeed, students, if you bring your student passes, have free entrance to the cathedral. I just wanted to say a few words to you about Bishop Grossetest from the point of view of the cathedral here, because Bishop Grossetest was uh, the founder of a real seat of learning here, a prestigious place of learning back in the 13th century. And he was at the signing of the Magna Carta in 1215 at Runnymede, of which the cathedral owns a copy. And he was described as a very forward-thinking and radical uh, person in his age. At a time when they talked about the dark ages of backward thinking and superstition, he was anything but that. And he had a great mind and intellect, so a great, great patron for you all. And one of the things he particularly promoted was using every faculty to learn, to using your senses, your imagination, thinking about how far afield you can gain that information at beyond the reaches of your normal traditions. So he was a great experimenter and he discovered how the action of light made rainbows. And he did that by lying on his back and squirting water into the air. So as you begin your time here as students, I hope that you will be full of the same passion and imagination in your learning and education. And as I said, please know you're always welcome here. If ever a time you feel that you need to come and find uh, a place of peace or refuge, the doors are open to you. So as we begin this time in Lincoln, I would like to pray for you. Almighty God, who gave Bishop Grostes great wisdom and moments of inspiration and wonder, may all who matriculate today be filled with inquiring minds, a breadth of approach to learning, and joy in discovering new things. May it be a time of new friendships. Lead us all from darkness to light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hereby declare this congregation assembled for the matriculation of students to be open. I welcome all who are gathered here for this ceremony. High Sheriff, Madam Chancellor, Madam Dean, Mr. Mayor, distinguished civic guests, distinguished guests, staff and students of Bishop Gross Test University. As Vice Chancellor of the institution, it gives me huge pleasure to welcome you all to this, our 2018 matriculation ceremony. We have been preparing for you we have been eagerly awaiting your arrival, and now you are here, and it's a huge pleasure to see you all today. I actually live on the campus, and I always know that a new year has started because of the white t-shirts, the golf parties, the foam parties, and the dulcet tones of karaoke drifting across the campus. And of course, I realize that our new enthusiastic students have arrived, the next generation of scholars of our institution, full of anticipation, energy, hope, aspiration, and I hope also intelligence. Some of your undergraduates, some postgraduates, some doctoral students. And if you are in BG for the first time, you have arrived in an institution with a long-standing history 
in a city which is one of the most historic in the country. And we're in this magnificent building, which is one of the most splendid cathedrals in the world. And if you're a continuing student, you know the benefits of studying here. So what is a matriculation ceremony all about? Well, it's part of the process of entering a university. It's the ceremony at which new students are entered onto the register in Latin matricula, and thereby you become members of the university. It's a very special ceremony held only in some of the country's oldest universities, which have a proud heritage. And we are very proud of our rich and unique heritage. We introduced a matriculation ceremony about four years ago for two reasons. The first is that, as the Dean has mentioned, this is Robert Gross Test Day, the 9th of October, when he is remembered by the church worldwide. And we wanted to celebrate on this day. And I hope that you will be able to educate the general public how to pronounce his name. Grossa Testa, I think is the most accurate. And also what it means, big mind or big head. Somebody said to me recently, oh, you're the head of big head, which it took me a minute to work out what he was saying. And Dr. Jack Cunningham is going to tell us a bit more about the work of Gross Test later. The second reason for introducing such an event was that I was a bit concerned to read an interview in one of the national papers in which a student said that she only knew who her vice chancellor was at graduation, at the end of her studies. So I wanted an opportunity to be able to talk to all of our new students about our university community right at the start of your time with us. So at least you know who I am, although I don't always dress like this on campus. And talking of academic dress, you're the first group for whom we have, um, I was going to say bought, we've hired the academic costumes. And I have to say, you look absolutely tremendous in them. And you are really do credit to your academic discipline and to your own heritage. A community can be defined as a group of people living in the same place or as a group sharing the same attitudes and values. And the thread which binds both of these uh, definitions together is the idea of belonging or togetherness. And history gives us many examples of communities coming together to help each other, the whole being greater than the sum of the parts. And today we are welcome you to really three interrelated communities, the BG community, the academic community, and the wider community of Lincoln. And of course, you all bring with you your own experience of community and parts of your own communities with you, which will enrich the lives of those with whom you come into contact. So first, the BG community. It includes everyone here, staff, students, past and present. And your time on campus will generate a bond of friendship which you share with many others. For some of you, living together will be part of your experience. And for others, you will experience the campus on a day-to-day -day basis. Students have lived on campus since the institution was established in the 19th century. And I thought you might be interested to hear some of the rules which governed the living conditions of those who started living in at that time. Rule number one, no new friends should be made in Lincoln. Rule number seven, students may go downhill on Tuesday and Saturday afternoons only. And rule number eight, my favorite, outdoor exercise must be taken every day unless illness or weather prevents. And the time for this exercise should never be less than one and a half hours. These may sound a bit outdated and the look in some of your faces suggests that they would not be appropriate for our group of students in the 21st century. But there is one rule which I think has stood the test of time, which is this. It is earnestly hoped that all students will sustain the honor 
and high reputation of the institution. And I hope that you will continue that and be good ambassadors of BG wherever you go. Another member of the campus is John T. the White Cat that you've perhaps seen on the screen, who is our community cat. And as some of you already know, he sometimes helps out in the IT department. But on a serious note, don't take him to the vet as a stray. He is not a stray. He is very much part of the BGU community. And he loves being talked to and stroked, but don't think of him as a stray. The second community, the academic community, is one to which you have already been introduced. And in the shortest possible time, you are becoming professionals, arche archaeologists, businessmen and women, counsellors, actors, geographers, healthcare professionals, historians, psychologists, teachers, and theologians. You're being introduced to the expertise and to the discourse of that profession. And you will continue to develop your knowledge and skills throughout your time here so that you will be challenged, you'll become more confident, and you will be able to function not only internally within BG, but also externally in the community. So that when you return to the cathedral, as the Dean has mentioned, to graduate, you will not be the same person as sitting here today, but you will be a truly rounded graduate of the institution with new knowledge and skills. And the third community of which you are part is the wider community of Lincoln. We see our university and our staff and students as integrated into this community. And you will have various opportunities to become part of that community on placement, taking part in our employability award, learning beside members of the public in the BG award, or taking part in various volunteering opportunities, and also engaging with the community in ways which are unique to you. And I would encourage you to get involved in as many activities as you can while you are here. Some of our students have such a great time here in Lincoln that they never leave. So in conclusion, may I, on behalf of the whole BG community, thank you for choosing to spend the best and most productive years of your life with us. And I wish you every success during your time here. As a symbol of your joining the community, you will receive a little gold badge, which I hope you will wear with pride. And if for some reason we run out of badges, please make sure you get one from the events office. And just remember that you have an appointment back here in either the end of this year or in two years or in three years when you complete your qualification. But in the meantime, I wish you every enjoyment and every success as part of our community. Thank you. So I now invite all students to rise to be formally admitted as members of the university. Please stand. So by the authority of the university, I admit all new students presented at this matriculation ceremony as members of the university community. I now call upon the registrar, Stephanie Galilli, to subscribe formally the students onto the matricula roll. The ceremony of matriculation marks the beginning of formal membership of the university. As registrar, it gives me great pleasure to subscribe the matriculation book as part of the university regulations. So may I now invite you all to shake hands with each other, to welcome each other.
I think that deserves a round of applause. So I now call upon Craig Ferguson, President of the Students' Union, to talk to you. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor, Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lincoln Cathedral. These will be the best three years of your life. This is no doubt a phrase that you will hear countless numbers of times over the next three years. To some, it may sound a bit cliché, but I can assure you that it's true. Your time at university will provide you with a wealth of experiences, opportunities and friends that you will have for life. So I say this, make the most of every single second. There is no point in denying that this will occasionally be tough. It will be scary at times. There will be times that you want to give up. But it is in these times that BG truly comes into its own. You could not be attending a more welcoming, friendly and supportive university. From the academic staff who lead your lectures to the support staff who help you through those difficult times, everybody here at BGU strives to see you succeed. The Students' Union is always there to lend an ear and signpost you to the services that will give you the best support possible. We don't take a one-size-fits-all approach. Every student at BGU is an individual and is treated as such. Not only will you have support from the academic staff, but your peers will also play a pivotal role in making your time at university the most memorable. Over the coming weeks and months, you will make friends that you are sure to have for life. These people can be a shoulder to cry on, a comedian to laugh with, and someone with whom you can make memories that will last a lifetime. I can remember being in my first year for the first matriculation ceremony in 2015. I was both nervous and excited. Surrounded by people I didn't really know that well, but everyone was in the same position as me. That was the start of my journey. I didn't know anyone particularly well at my matriculation, and I couldn't imagine how much of an impact those people would have on my life. Fast forward to a couple of months ago when I graduated in this magnificent building. There was an air of sadness as the best three years of my life had come to an end, but also an overwhelming sense of pride, happiness and accomplishment. Being able to spend the day with friends I've made along the way was the perfect way to close this chapter of my life. It is my hope that you will all find similar experiences during your study. Thank you. Sorry, please be seated. <laughs> that was actually my fault. I should have told you to sit down before the president spoke to you. I hope he doesn't get used to people standing up when he comes to address an audience because he will be sorely disappointed. So I now call upon uh, Dr. Jack Cunningham, who's a programme leader for theology, to tell us a bit more about Bishop Gross Test. Jack. In 1235, Robert Grostes did an extraordinary thing. That year, he became Bishop of Lincoln, and he was almost certainly in his late 60s. He was the largest diocese in the country, covering one-third of the landmass of England. It stretched from the Humber in the north to the Thames at Oxford in the south. Now, becoming a bishop at this late stage in a medieval life was generally regarded as a form of retirement, but instead, Grostes took off with his retinue of scholars and books to personally visit every church in his enormous diocese. He took him with him a new breed of cleric, the Dominican and Franciscan friars, who were like monks, but not encased behind monastery walls. Instead, they vowed to work among ordinary people. 
The mission of this party was to talk to, engage with, and educate ordinary men, women, and children. This was part of a new wave of radical reforms that were sweeping Western Europe, which were for the first time taking seriously the educational formation, not just of priests and monks, but ordinary people as well. New institutions called universities were springing up in cities like Bologna, Paris, and Oxford. And the most advanced scholars of the age were embracing the new philosophies and sciences that were arriving from the Arab world. And why did Robert Grosto forgo the comforts of retirement? Well, because he believed implicitly in literis victoriam. That is nothing less than the ultimate victory of learning over the forces of ignorance, greed, and corruption that blighted the world he lived in. Like all revolutionary movements, this one encountered a great deal of opposition, and in his lifetime, Grostest was called upon to stand up against kings and popes who, th who threatened this vision of learning. But historically speaking, this story is a happy one. Since barely a century after his life, Europe witnessed the start of its greatest flowering of the arts and sciences, when the Renaissance gave us geniuses like Leonardo da Vinci, Dante, and Michelangelo. Now, you may ask what all this has got to do with you and your matriculation onto a university program. Well, with this. There are repeated times, it seems, in our history when the pursuit of learning faces similar counteractive forces to the ones Grostest fought against. And there are worrying hints that we are living in just such an age. In such times, it is possible, though barely credible, that the most powerful democratically elected person in the world can tell his audiences that he loves an educated people. It is also possible that governments can talk about measuring the successes of our universities by how much money their graduates earn. 800 years ago, during a time we now call the Dark Ages, Bishop Grostest would have been appalled by such notions. At these moments in history, the greatest weapon we can use against such a miasma of ignorance is a sharpened mind. And it is incumbent on all of us who hold the learning process dear to sharpen the weapons of our intellects. As you formally enter the university today, that is exactly what you're preparing to do. And as you come to gather your matriculation badges, I urge you to whisper yourself this most powerful of ideas, victory to learning. And when you leave the cathedral a little later, carry out with you the same slogan so that the spires of the cathedral that Robert Grostest helped to build will ring out once again with his same rallying cry, Literus Victoriam, victory to learning, victory to learning. Madam Chancellor, Mr. Mayor, distinguished guests, fellow members of Bishop Grossetest University. My name is Peter Green. I'm the Dean of Chapel. I want to reinforce some of the things you've already heard. When I think back on some of the more stressful experiences of my life, the first days at a new educational establishment are definitely on the list. I vividly remember the intensity of my first few days at university. But in amongst the strange experiences of being a new student, there is one that stands out above all. And it is a very positive memory. And you've already had a sample of it. I remember the number of people, the equivalent of the president of the Students' Union, the folk in charge of accommodation, the lecturers on the courses we were enrolled on, the equivalent of those in student advice and the Center for the Enhancement of Learning and Teaching, and even the Vice-Chancellor of the University, 
all of whom said, either in small informal gatherings or in the big meetings that characterize the start of the new academic year, they all said words to the effect, we want you to be happy here and we want you to do well. Please, please don't hesitate to ask if you think there's anything we can do to help. Time and again, that message was reiterated. And I haven't forgotten the chaplain, by the way. He said that too. Why did they all say that so insistently? The reason is simple. They all knew what it is like to embark on higher education. They all knew what it was like to be where you are now. They all knew that the experience you're embarked on will at times be very stressful and challenging. They all knew that sometimes it would be complicated by the stresses and challenges that come from your life outside university. They also all knew that you are embarking on an experience that will change your life forever. And there's a very good chance indeed that with the occasional false start, you will soon meet, or indeed you may have already met, some of the people who will be your friends for the rest of your life. What's the role of the chaplaincy in all this? That will be a question that those of you with a religious affiliation different from mine or with no religious affiliation will be asking most of all. I've been intrigued by new students this year asking me what parish I'm running. They have assumed that I'm a visitor to the university. Just to clear up any misunderstanding, for the whole of its history, as far as I'm aware, our community has, has always had a full-time chaplain. I'm employed full-time by the university, and my job also involves teaching at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. But 80% of what I do and what the chaplaincy does is pastoral and social. And the key meaning of the fact that I'm employed by the university is that I am tasked with running a chaplaincy for all members of this university, staff as well as students, and irrespective of religious affiliation or whether or not they have a religious affiliation. When I've tried to explain this in the past, a member of our chaplaincy team came up with a hashtag for our social media presence. Hashtag, there is no catch. If you want to come paintballing, or to go to the opera, or to spend a couple of hours in play zone, or to visit a local site of historic interest, or spend a weekend in the Pitt Peak District, or go to the Harry Potter studios with us, then you don't have to sit through some strange religious ceremony first. And by the way, that list is just a tiny bit of what we do on an everyday basis. And then there's the free food. If a member of the chaplaincy team offers you a piece of cake and you accept, this is not the first step on your being recruited into a brainwashing program. It isn't laced with a psychotropic drug. It's just a piece of cake. <laughs> and if you want to pray with us, or to ask us to help you find a place or a community in which to pray, then you can do that too. Nor do you have to be religious to enjoy the beauty or the quiet of our historic chapel. And what's more, if you're interested in joining the chaplaincy team, whether or not you have a religious affiliation, you can, and this is my pitch. 
when I look at you now, I have in my mind's eye the day that you'll be back here for your graduation. I know that some of you don't believe that you'll make it that far. We want to help prove those of you who are already thinking that, that you're wrong. You can do it. If there's anything we can do to help, please, just ask. It now gives me great pleasure to invite the cathedral stewards and Bishop Grosseteste University Student Union Executive Team to distribute the matriculation badges. Please remain seated quietly as we reflect upon the short recital given by the musicians of the university.
I'm now delighted to introduce two current students who were sitting where you were either last year or in previous years. First, Samuel Wernham and then Emma Stanbridge. If you both would like to come up. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. My name is Samuel Wernham and I'm a second year drama student. And I'm honoured to speak to you all today and I wish to congratulate you on starting some of the best years of your life. Now, becoming a first year is daunting. I'm sure you're all aware of this. When I started first year, I was terrified. There's reading, assignments, finding a way around, and the dreaded problem of waking up at nine o'clock in the morning. But in all seriousness, there are lots of aspects of being a first year that are worrying. But you have chosen, in my opinion, the best possible place for supporting you. Our university has amazing academic, pastoral, and administrative staff who are always there to help. When I didn't understand a theory in one of my modules, I could always speak to my lecturers. When I didn't know how to structure an essay, Kelt was always there. And if I had any finance or housing problems, the offices were always open. When I needed personal or emotional support, student advice helped me to attend regular counselling sessions. This university has enabled me to grow with continued support and open doors and smiling faces and those faces and those doors will be there for you to support you through whatever, whenever. So all you'll need to worry about is waking up at 9am. Thank you all for your time and have an amazing education. Good afternoon, I'm Emma, and this year I'm studying MA English Literature after completing my undergraduate degree at BGU earlier this year. Three years ago, I was sitting in my matriculation ceremony, anticipating how long and difficult the next three years might be. Though it will sometimes seem like some trips to the library are endless, and the end of an essay is a few thousand words away, I can tell you from experience that your time at university will fly past. Someone said to me as I began my university journey, don't count your years, make your years count. Three years ago, if I had been asked to speak in Lincoln Cathedral, I would have run a mile. <laughs> Suffice to say, today is going quite a bit better. <laughs> um, my first presentation did not go well. After this, I knew that if I really wanted to make the next three years count and see my myself progress, I needed to change my approach. I began to look at assessments as challenges, as something to both overcome and enjoy. I went about improving my skills and confidence in my own ability by engaging with support networks, such as, such as learning development, and doing presentations in schools and to prospective students on open days with the Student Ambassador Program. Whether three years seems like a short period of time to you or not, the progression you can make and the things you can achieve are vast. Though your time at university will fly past, you are the navigator. Therefore, my advice to you, in order to make your time at university count, is to make the most of every opportunity to engage with the BGU community. Whether this be with academic events, the Student Ambassador Programme, or trying something new, such as a new society. It is also important to ensure that along the way, in the whirlwind of assignments, lectures, and nights out, you take time to take it all in and reflect on university life and your experiences here. I do hope you thoroughly enjoy your time at Bishop Grace Test University, as I have, and that you endeavour to make your years here count. Thank you. Let us pray. Go forth from here with all your giftedness and potential, with all your hopes and your dreams. And as you go, may the road rise up to meet you and the wind be always at your back and the Lord God hold you in the hollow of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
I now declare this matriculation ceremony closed. Welcome to the university and thank you for joining us. Matriculating students, we ask you to join the procession when directed and to stay for the traditional group photograph out on the West Front while guests remain in their places.